Good afternoon. Um, my name is Dr. Kafui Kwaku, uh, currently the Assistant Director in the Office of Continuing Education and Workforce Program here at CUNY. I'm primarily focusing on programs such as the CUNY Service Core, um, CUNY Cultural Core Program for Dreamers here at CUNY. Um, those programs are experiential learning programs that provide opportunity for CUNY students. Uh, including BMI students to be able to build employability skills so they can be more marketable when they apply for jobs. And I'll be talking, I'll be looking at this a little bit later um, during the talk. Um, but when I get the invitation to come and give this talk today, uh, I had to take a minute back and uh, reflect on my own experience. Uh, I like to reflect a lot. Um, that's something that I consistently do. So um, thought about my educational journey and realized everything converged to a certain point in my life that revolved around my dad. Because my dad has always been a big advocate for education. And back in those days, I did not really understand why he was pushing us so hard to be able to graduate from high school, go to college, and go as far as we can. And uh, same thing with my mom. My mom always, she's the smartest in the family, I have to say. Uh, if you need somebody to uh, take a dollar and multiply by two, three for you, my mom is the person. <laughs> but she never graduated from high school. And she always said, had I gone to high school, college, only sky will be the limit for me. So what I didn't get a chance to have, I want you guys to have it. So that has been the story in the family. So uh, both of my parents have always pushed us, all of us, including me, to really drive ourselves through the uh, you know challenges that arise when you are on that educational path. So the, the reality is if I want to really stand here today and talk about my whole entire educational journey, we'll be here for probably until tomorrow. So I will spare you all that. Not that it's going to be boring, but I'll just spare you that and fast forward until uh, the point of my recent one, which is the uh, doctoral uh, program that I recently completed. So when I initially decided to um, you know, apply for my doctoral degree um, and to connect this to the topic of the day, which is the power of consistency. Uh, I did mention experiential learning. Experiential learning is what you know has you know directed me to the program that I have completed. What have I done? I started looking into different programs that are very flexible because I needed to keep my full time job and go to school full time as well because. I have to pay for myself out of pocket and there are a lot of bills that are waiting so there's no way I could have just quit my job and go full time to school so I was looking for that program that can give me the flexibility to be able to do that and Northeastern is one of the schools that I, I look into the program and realize this is a program that can uh, you know meet my need uh, so I can complete this education but one thing that I, I knew I wanted to do from the jump is I want my study to focus on experiential learning and um, since uh, this has a particular and personal meaning for me, because I was one of those students that graduated from uh, with my bachelor, applied for a couple of hundred jobs, probably got maybe two, three interviews, and it all came down to one question: What experience do you have? And I wasn't able to answer that question or provide the right answer, hence I wasn't able to get any of those jobs. Then I realized. The equation that we often give our students, that I've heard myself as a student, that say go to school, go to classes, get good grades, good GPA, and then when you graduate, you'll get a job. You know, it has worked for some students, but it was missing a variable, which is the experience space. And this is where experiential learning is filling that gap. So for me, it has been how can now, now uh, take their chance to be able to change other students' lives so they don't face the same challenges that I faced. So since then, job, research, educational path has all geared towards experiential learning for me. So when I chose uh, Northeastern to um, do my doctorate, the one thing that I've done, and I masterfully done this, is to take every single class that I have in the program and make sure, regardless of how hard it is, to connect the content of the class to experiential learning. Talking about the power of consistency, that's the one thing that I have been really consistent through this whole journey. Why? Because if you have the topic of interest, and many people will tell you, people who have changed their topic of interest, that's almost like adding one more year or two more years to the program because you're starting everything from scratch. And I was not about to do that because I didn't want to waste time and I didn't want to pay for extra time that I didn't have to. So I was really consistent in making sure I link every class assignment, everything to uh, experiential learning. In some classes, I had to force it 
to be honest, because there was really no alignment there. And sometimes my professor used to tell me, that's quite interesting, I never really think about it that way. But that's me forcing the connection between experiential learning and the topic of the class. And that, was a, that worked for me, because at the end of the coursework, I was halfway down through my dissertation because I had all the content that was really needed to be able to write the dissertation. And that took me a shorter period of time to be able to complete that journey because a lot of people will also tell you one of the toughest things to do is get on that uh, dissertation phase and a path where you are alone and still be able to complete it because then you have to be really persistent, which is really connected to the power of consistency because persistence comes from being consistent all the time. So that's a place that's very lonely. So you need some support and you need to have to do some due diligence in building some content for you to be able to move from that. So now that being said, again, everything has revolved around experiential learning for me. I'm gonna really quickly access the room. Anybody <coughs> in the room here um, is who hasn't gotten her dead doctor yet is thinking about doing the doctor. Okay, I've seen a lot of hands going up. If that's not something that you're considering, it's still fine. But the one thing that I will tell you, you have to you have to remain consistent in everything you do. Why? Because every student that have participated in any of my program or been part of my classes, that's something they really observe on you. Because they come to you, they seek your advice, but oftentimes one thing they don't tell you is they pay attention to almost everything you do. When you are very consistent in everything you do, that's the same thing they're going to try to emulate. That's the same thing they're going to try to do. And that's only a path that can lead them to success. So if they come to you today and you have the happy face, tomorrow you have the sad face, the third day you are angry, uh, the fourth day you are sad. So if they see the inconsistency, they're going to start thinking themselves, when I walk into that office today, who am I going to see? Am I going to see Andre or am I going to see Andrea? So they will be trying to figure, and you don't want to give that perception to your students that you are not very consistent in the way you approach your work. Even professionally, you will realize that when you are very consistent in everything you do, you become expert in specific areas. So when they talk about somebody who can critically think and analyze and you know think about a strategy for a project, when a new idea comes on the table, that person is going to be the first name to call to say, we need that person in the room to be able to dissect everything and show us the different element that will go into making this idea successful. Or if you are the person who always the glue to the team, building the team, when there are team dynamic that's not quite working, guess who they come to? They say, we need this person in the room so we can overcome these challenges that the, teams, uh, the team is facing. So again, that consistency that you have in your professional life is really gonna drive the way people look at you. And I always put all that into one quote that I have. And this is from Aristotle, which said, we are what we repeatedly do. <clears throat> Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit. So if you do, if you are consistent in doing the same thing all the time, it becomes part of you. It becomes second nature. You don't even think about it. Actually, let me ask this quick question. Um, uh, anybody drive in this room? Yeah. Okay, quite a few people. <coughs> Have you ever realized that you go to a, a certain a destination often? You drive there all the time and sometimes you just get in the car, you don't think about it, but you end up in the same destination? Yes, it happens all the time. And if sometimes if somebody asks you, can you give me direction to get there? You're going to think about it and say, you know what? I can't really tell you how to get there, but I can get you there. Why? Because you have been very consistent in navigating that path. So, it became ingrained in your, uh, you know, in the back of your mind how to get there. That's the same thing. You have to really look at whenever you're approaching your professional life. Because first, you have to look at it from serving our students. When we're serving our students, what do we want our students to achieve? We want them to be persistent, we want them to be successful and graduate. That's what we want. And they will learn a piece of that persistence from you and they will remain consistent based on what they see from you and the advice you give to them. So that's something to consider. Also in your own professional life, what do you want your colleague to see in you? How consistent are you? Are you reliable? Are you consistent at delivering results? Those are the things that will be assessed when you come down uh, time to for that promotion or getting that person to that next level. And I know uh, that many of you here, this is not the end. This is just the beginning of the career, which is going to lead you to a lot of places. So 
consistency is something that is very essential that is very key to get you to that point so the last thing that I'll tell you in closing this is when you approach your work which you have already done remember that a lot of people will be looking at you and the things that you do and how consistent in everything that you do then they will try to pick up on that and emulate what you do or they will rely on you to be that person that always show excellency so remember that when your students look at you they should see you or they should see everything you do as a habit not just an act out of nowhere when they see it as an, a, a, a habit they will continue to come to you and they will seek success so thank you for allowing me to speak to you guys today <laughs>